What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the lab with another quest player build. This time, I'm bringing y'all the blueprint to making a Yao Ming hatch on 2K21 Next Gen. I was trying to get in the builder and cook up something that could be completely dominant at 7'3", seeing as it'd be a nice counter to all the 6'7 and small ball that's been playing at the rec. And so I wanted to try to make the best 7'3 hatch that I could, um, and it really felt like a Yao Ming hatch uh, so I'm gonna take you through this blueprint if you guys are trying to make a big man hatch uh, that can kinda do it all in a sense uh, follow along um, you're gonna be a center and you're gonna be seven foot three 237 pounds with a seven foot six wingspan now Yao Ming was more than 237 pounds but for the sake of the game you wanna get that speed to a 60 you want that vertical for a 65 uh, to unlock certain dunk animations and overall it allows you to get pretty good attributes um, throughout the build so your close shot this is probably going to be the one hot topic on this build you're only going to get your close shot to a 39 now you're going to max out your driving layup driving dunk standing dunk and your post control that's going to give you 14 finishing badges at the end of this build technically if you were to go back and drop your post control down to whatever you're only gonna really get your close shot up to around the 70s and you're gonna basically lose out on half the badges if you maximize the significance of close shot so for the sake of getting more badges which will allow you to finish actually inside you want to max everything out but close shot at a 39 and at 73 in my opinion I think you're still going to be able to hit inside even though you don't have the necessary attribute. You're still going to get Fearless Finisher on gold. You're going to have Hall of Fame Rise Up, Hall of Fame Posters, and you can put on Giant Slayer and basically still still finish when you just get a catch on the block and try to go up uh, right under the basket, in my opinion. If you don't like that, by all means, you can sacrifice the badges if you want that super close shot. But for the sake of this, I think with the more wide open, like wide open play, uh, it works just fine with a 39. Let me know down in the comments if you agree or not. I might have lost some of y'all on this build already, but we're going to keep going. You're going to max out your mid-range and your three ball 82 and 80, and then get your free throw to a 59. That's going to give you 12 shooting badges. Yao Ming could come out uh, you know, about 10 15 feet and knock down that midi jumper with basically nobody to be able to contest him all day long. You're going to get Fade Ace on Hall of Fame, Dead Eye on Gold, Catch and Shoot on Gold. You're going to be able to hit jumpers on this build at 7-3, and I think this is going to be able to stretch the floor with that 83 ball, which is going to be really nice when playing comp. You're going to max out, max out your pass accuracy, your ball handle, and your speed with ball. That's going to give you 11 playmaking. This is definitely a playmaking build. You can get Hall of Fame Bullet Passer, dimer needle threader and so you'll be a nice piece when they dump it down to you on the block and you don't need to just force everything you can kick it out and they can kind of go inside out in the offense this is a nice big man build at 7-3 that can do a lot offensively but then defensively you're going to max out your interior defense to a 90 max out your perimeter d your steelies your block and then put your defense rebound to a 94 and then you see the offense rebound to a 70. That's going to give you 20 defensive badges. This is a defensive juggernaut, in my opinion. You're going to have all the Hall of Fame badges you want to lock down the post. The perimeter defense with a 51, you're going to be able to slide your feet a little bit, and you're going to be long and 7-3, and you're going to be dominating on both ends. And then you're going to max out your speed, acceleration, keep your strength at a 65, get your vert max to a 65, and then max out your stamina to a 76. Okay, as you can see, on the stamina you have a 76, and in my notes I have this build at an 80 stamina. So, the way this builder works, I still don't 100% understand how you can tinker certain things, but we're going to try to get this stamina to an 80 by keeping those 20 defensive badges. And so then you got to kind of go in and tinker where you know you might have to mess with offensive rebound a little bit and then get your stamina to an 80 and then go back to defensive rebound put that to a 94 and then click it one more time even though it says it doesn't have the attributes and then you get offensive rebound to a 70 that gives you the 20 badges y'all just saw it that's me pulling levers and dropping potions in the bucket i don't know how this thing works but 
I mean, I wasn't even on offensive rebound putting in attributes, and then you get an extra one when you can't put it anywhere else. And you see, it has overall 95 out of 95, but the close shot is still highlighted at a 39. I can't add anything to that. But you certainly can drop it down, and you would just lose an attribute and a badge. So there you have it, 14 finishing, 12 shooting, 11 playmaking, and 20 defensive badges. I think this is also a good example as to how this builder is so crazy. Um, but this build can finish, it can shoot, it can definitely make plays, and then defensively it'll be able to be a juggernaut in the paint. And at 7-3 with um, you know the speed and acceleration um, around 60 and the vertical at 65 strength, this is an all-around good build in my opinion. And Yao Ming completely dominated at the peak of his career. So with Yao Ming being a dominating force down low, I'm going to put advanced post moves to make him a threat as his primary. And then I'm going to do paint intimidation as his secondary. You could do anything, obviously, to your build. But I think Yao was an offensive powerhouse first and then obviously could block shots and stuff on the other end. And that's going to give you the name Paint Beast. So one thing, if you want an RBC name and you don't want to just be a paint beast or you don't want to just be an interior force or something like that, um, to get a true kind of RBC rare build name, you could just sacrifice two badges on defense and drop your offensive rebound to a 68. You get the paint beast name because you have an offensive rebound over 68. If you drop it to 68, like I said, you miss out on two defensive badges, which is kind of huge. And... You end up being a two-way post facilitator. Again, really hot build. You, you're probably not going to see a lot of people on that, especially at 7-3. Um, so if you really want that name and you play better with an RBC um, build that doesn't just kind of one size fits all and you feel very specific and you feel good, you play good, you look good, then by all means, drop those two badges and go with that name. But if you're just trying to get badges and you're just trying to dominate and you like this blueprint of Yao Ming, then, you know, you're a paint beast. You are on both sides. You're going to dominate and your opponents are going to know they probably shouldn't go in the lane on either end of the court. So we're going to put this in the test builder to see if he plays like Yao Ming and if this thing really truly can dominate. Hope you guys like this blueprint and you know what time it is. Quest Sparrow, Quest Player Builds. 